Hello, my friend. My name is Anton from Conning.com, and we continue today our video series about PYJ and MI. We have been talking for quite a while, and in this time, we was baking something very special for you, which I believe you would like to see. So we only have covered previously the basic um, approaches, how you could use PYJ and MI in terms of which calls, capabilities, get, set, subscribe, how all these basic elements are working. We also covered the um, um elements about the authentication how to do it without certificate or with self-signed certificate how to do it with pki so that you have all the working components today we'll take a look one of the scenario how you could apply the py jnmi for solving quite a practical use case so what the practical use case might be one of the obviously very important element to the stability and uh to the like health network is to know whether your network is uh, configured properly and whether it's operating properly, right? So how we can do this? We can go to the device, we could collect some information about, let's say the BFD or BGP or any other configurations and manually validate, okay, whether my session's up or not. But this is not very practical, right? If we can do it in an automated way, in a few seconds, just getting the information about whether my network is up and running, whether it is not, what the elements are up and running or not, and give you quite quick output that would give you very good tool for the troubleshooting or just ad hoc network assurance. This is what we are working on. Today, we will talk about how we can rely on the Python and obviously PY JNMI to provide you this capability. Just to recap what our topology is looking like, we have our server running PYGNMA and some other Python components and two routers, Nokia SRS router and Arista EOS router as well. Now, today the company to the PYGNMA will take two more Python uh, libraries. In fact, just only one more important. The library is called uh, PYTest. So PY test, this is a library created by uh, the team of individuals, which is uh, focused to provide your uh, rock solid framework for the automated testing. Its primary goal is to help with the unit tests for various um, tools uh, or for software development. However, besides being a very useful uh, tool for the unit test, it gives you a possibility to create the workload allows you quickly assure some scenario. So how it works, let's jump to the code and show what we have prepared uh, for yourself. Now, this is our uh, prepared scenario as you see for the Nokia. The structure of the PY test is looks like, we need to create a folder which is called tests. In this is folder test, we create the file which must be named test underscore something. In this, um, uh, test underscore uh, test underscore something, we are creating our test which we are going to run in the automated way. So as you could see from inside, this is an ordinary Python model or ordinary Python script. We are importing the necessary models. In our case, this is JNMI and um, some others uh, like an OS and RE from the standard Python distribution to work with operating system and to work also with regular expressions. Then we are defining in this file for simplicity also the details about the connectivity, meaning IP address and the target port where we're connecting to the device to the uh, using the JNMI. And finally, the test themselves. Again, the tests, they are created as a user defined functions. We have a keyword DTF. And then uh, as user defined function, it also should have a certain naming conventions to work with the PY test. It should be starting also with the test underscore. If you fail to provide the same test underscore, the test will be ignored. However, if you have everywhere tests, folder tests, file called test underscore, and inside these files, you have also the user defined functions called test underscore, this would be working. So we are using the imported uh, model OS to allow us to read the credentials from the environment. We don't need in this case to hard code them in our test files or somewhere else. We just, in our environment, we provide them using the export PYGNMI user uh, equal something command and the say we're doing for the uh, password. Then once we have provided uh, those comments, this inform will be imported into the 
uh, our environment. And then when we run the, our script, it will be ready. Further, we are making a JNMI call. So in the first case, we're just testing whether the JNMI is working in particular or not, how the test is working. We are performing the JNMI capabilities call. We are receiving the result. Uh, with the help of PY JNMI, the result is converted over in the Python dictionary. And using the keyword assert, we are validating whether certain statement is true. Basically, if all in this case you see, uh, we have a three assert statements would be uh, true. Basically, if the conditional that we are passing to the assert is true, then the test will be passed. Now, JNMI allows us to perform multiple calls simultaneously. However, in this case, the granularity of the test might be a little bit blurry because we would be doing a lot of assert statements. In our case, we decided to split the test into multiple steps. Um, we are sacrificing the IO, we're doing multiple JNMI calls. However, we are having very uh, clean uh, solution in terms of that we are validating uh, the particular call and what we have inside. Um, in terms of the JNMI connectivity, we're just checking whether the standard parameter that should be present and then the result, they are existing. If they are existing, we are just making sure that JNMI is working, we can run further JNMI based test. Now, um, as we're working with JNMI, we are working with the model driven works, right? And we decided to go with the open config because open config is one of the most uh, probably uh, promising young models that are developing these days. Their development is not that quick as we would like it to be. However, um, it is gradually developing and adding more and more models and the penetration of open config around among other vendors are also getting quite high. Now, what we are doing, we are testing uh, three more items for our scenario. We are testing whether our interface is up and running, whether our BFD is up and running and whether BGP is up and running. How we are doing this? We're performing there with the help of PYJNMI, the uh, get call. In the get RPC, we are providing the request, first of all, for the interfaces. We are receiving again the big dictionary, which is containing a lot of the data. In our case, we are checking uh, whether for all the physical interfaces, and that's why you see we are uh, making a for loop through the received answer. We are checking whether in the device type, in the interface type, sorry, we have an Ethernet saying some D key. It allows us to filter the physical parameter, physical interfaces. If the interface is uh, software loopback, it wouldn't have the state app. And then once we are filtering the corresponding interfaces, we are checking that they are administer state status equal to the operational. Meaning the assumption is if the interface is administratively up, it must be physically up as well. If it is administratively down, obviously it would be implicitly um, operationally down as well. We should not have the interfaces that are unlegitimately up administratively being down operationally. This is our use case. Obviously, in your network, there might be different use cases. You might be checking not against uh, the device itself, but rather against some predefined values. However, that gives you an idea. So in this case, we're making the for loop and we're making the assert statement. If any of the interfaces status of the operational will be different to the administrative, the test will be failed. Otherwise, the test will be successful. The same test we are doing, as you see, you have two files for the Arista and for the Nokia. The same test we are doing for the Arista. However, the reason why we are having uh, different um, files because we have slightly different paths. If you take a look on this particular line, you will see that first we are navigating through the open config, not from the open config generally from JNMI message structure notification, which is the list. So we are taking the first element, then update, which is a list again, we are taking this way. But then from there is the perspective, we are seeing open config dash interfaces, interface uh, key where we ask from the Nokia, we're receiving just interface. So we need to have this different naming conventions in order we can properly navigate through the response. This is a specific so the open config implementation on the particular vendor. However, once we have navigated to the corresponding key, the rest is the same. We're searching for the Ethernet. Again, you see we are doing here the regular expression. Why? Because in case of the Arista, it would append or prepend in this particular case, the Ethernet seems to the interface type with the namespace for the corresponding model, which is a uh, um, 
not open config, so IANA, FT, something like that. Whereas for the Nokia, it would be missing. We could have modified the slides as well, but the intention is to have the test as generic as possible. So uh, this is the first thing. We're testing the interface. Second one, we're testing the BFD. Now the implementation of the BFD on the Nokia open config, I mean, uh, models is uh, better than in the area stack. This is, we are talking about particular versions. We are using Nokia 20.10 R3, whereas for the Arista we're using 4.25. The reason why I'm saying this, because in the Nokia, in the response of the BFD, it also provides us the field which is called peers, and it shows which BFD sessions we have and in which state we have, whether we have them established or not. We don't have these capabilities in the Arista. Probably in the Arista, in the newer uh, versions of the EOS, such as uh, 4.26, it might be a better coverage. We haven't tested that yet. We will do it um, a little bit later when we get to this stage, but at least it gives understanding um, that there might be deviations about, between the open config implementation for different vendors. What exactly we are measuring here? We are checking if we have any peer. So there should be peer at least one per life in our network for our design. And we also checking that all the status of the peer should be up. Basically, we are checking that the session is up. It means, right, then our session, um, our BFD session is uh, properly tracking the status. We don't have the furthest test for the uh, Arista because we cannot check this particular parameter. The peers is just missing in the response uh, for the same uh, query uh, if we would do it on the Arista devices. And the last but not least is the BGP test. So BGP test, again, relying on the open config and models, we are querying the network instances. For the network instances, we are checking whether we have protocol BGP configured. If we have protocol BGP configured, which is again supposed to be in our network, we are checking that we have at least one neighbor or more and we are checking that the status of the BGP neighbor should be established. If the test is passed, then we would uh, have um, proper connectivity. If not, then not. Let me quickly uh, jump uh, to uh, the devices so that you could see how it is looking from the CLI perspective. So I'm going to uh, my, first of all, Arista router. So you could see show API interfaces brief. We have the interfaces, a physical interface, Ethernet app, loopback app. We have BGP IPv4 screencast summary. So you see we have uh, the BGP session app for this device. We're not checking BFD here, so it's probably not really important uh, to check that. Now let's go to Arista router. Sorry, to not care out of this time. And check what we have on that device. So show router uh, interface, which show you that we have physical interface. Arista uh, is configured using the open config because it's only supported. Maybe the open config, however, the configuration is, as you would see there, uh, purely like uh, CLI uh, based thing. Whereas from the Nokia perspective, we also configure it using their open config models. I'll show you in a second, but we are configuring as we're using model during CLI, it solely open config model. Now, checking here BFD sessions, would show that we have a BFD session also up and running. And if we check uh, the BGP, you see the BGP is also up and running. So just jumping into configuration, you could see that the configuration of the router is done using solely open config model. We are using the BFD to configure uh, the open config models to configure BFD, open config to configure interfaces, open config to configure network instances, and also BGP protocol. And finally, we are using the BFD to con a big open config to configure out in policy. Too many open config, right? However, this is configuration is looking like. So we see that interfaces up, BFD session is established, and uh, BGP is also up and running. Now, let's run 
the test. So in order to run the PY test, I said, we need to have the structure tests, test underscore name of the file uh, and test underscore name of the one. We need to install just using the PAP, the PY test library, which I have it installed, but this is how you're doing this. And when this library is installed, you run it is as simple as PY test dash three. So it is checking, as you see, it's collecting the tests. So it is finding that we have folder called tests and inside I have the file called test. Inside we have a proper functions name test underscore and it is running all our tests. Past means that all our inputs for the assert functions was true. If it would be assert false, it would be uh, uh, test would be passed. And before we could see that quickly, just in a less than two seconds, we are getting the clear view. The network is fine. Obviously, we would spend a lot of the time on preparing the corresponding test, but the benefit would be very, very um, significant because instead of manually thinking, okay, whether my BGP sessions are up, which sessions are up and down, you might think what the intent of the network is. In our case, we have created simple scenarios that we are just checking interfaces up, BFD up, and uh, the GP sessions are up. But you might create more complicated scenario where you also put in the data, uh, say from your uh, central uh, database from the netbox or infobox or any other tool. And this information would allow you to compare the uh, state of the particular device its interface or BGP, BFD, ISTS, or SPF, any other thing you have configured against this data. You could use uh, vendor native YAN models or open config, depends again on what you have on the network and how you have it implemented. We believe with this approach, you would benefit a lot from the network. If you like this video, put your like into the YouTube, distribute it your social media, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for attention today. Take care, have a good one and goodbye.